Hello everybody and welcome to Starting Small Music. I'm Justin McCormick and you're about to hear a conversation with an artist, musician, and music industry professional on their journey and how they got to where they are today. At Starting Small, we like to take you on a journey uncovering the untold stories of your favorite songs and artists. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Just keep a smile on your face and it be okay. Try not to be bitter, you gotta do it either way. So when life throws a jab, you gotta duck out of the way. What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Starting Small Music Podcast. Today we have drummer for Brandon Ray, Ryan Michael Tant. How you doing today, Ryan? I'm good. How you doing, bud? I'm doing good. So getting right into your story, where did you grow up and what was your childhood like? Well, I grew up in West Texas, a little small town called Big Spring, and I, I mean, it was so small. I graduated with 45 people. So that, that gives you an idea of how small it was. And, uh, you know, me and my younger brother, he was, who is Brandon Ray, he's my brother. Um, we just kind of grew up in this little town and just grew up around just country music and blues and jazz. And we kind of had the whole gambit, which, uh, you know, my mother was country music and my dad was everything but that. And so that's kind of how we got it going. And then I started playing I started playing drums when I was 12 and was in like, you know, a couple like Nirvana cover bands and like different stuff like that. And and then me and Brandon started our own rock band called Crimson Soul. And, you know, we did we we started it from the ground up, not knowing anything of what we were doing. And um, and then that just kind of transitioned to we started we moved to Dallas with into the bigger city and uh we did warp two or three years in a row and, and just kind of, we had Mohawks and guy liner and everything like that. We're in a punk rock band. And then, uh, and then that kind of fizzled out and uh, then we kind of moved to Nashville and Brandon's been here since I think 2009 and I moved here in 2011. So I've been here a good 12 years. And so uh, it's just been quite, quite a ride, honestly uh, with, you know, when you move to Nashville, you know, when you're the first time you're moving here, you're you're kind of bright eyed and bushy tailed and you're like, oh, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And then it's then reality kicks in, you know, and so um, and then you have to kind of maneuver your way through that. And it's not anything like you expected. Right. So it's been fun. It's been good. So you mentioned a couple of different genres. Uh, who are some of like the artists or albums that stick out from your childhood that kind of got you into music as a kid? Well, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, the funny thing is, is I had a couple CDs from Weird Al. Oh, really? And Yeah. And so that was my intro to pop music. And I had no idea that they were covers. <laughs> and so... And then I started learning more about it. I'm like, oh, these are all covers. And so I started learning, listening to like Michael Jackson and and all these and Prince and all these other artists and everything like that. Um, there's, I think one of the out the the albums that really trend really kind of changed me as a musician was the uh, the big Dixie Chicks record. I think yeah. they're called the Chicks now. And so. Um, when I heard this, when I heard the drumming on that record, it was, it was just nothing but just like straight two and four, like kick, snare, just, and I was like, this thing is moving and it is cooking and he's, they're not doing anything. And I was like, there's something to this. And so I, that's just kind of how I got in, I got into it. And then um, there was another record from 1993 it's a live record from a band called tower of power mm -hmm. and that record's called soul vaccination and that that record right there just put me on the path to just like okay like pocket is everything and i just kind of steered my way to that it's really funny you bring up that dixie chicks records i i, I recently went and revisited them just at the gym and man they had such a just a unique sound to them you know with the like you're talking about just the driving beat and such unique vocals on their stuff it was it's everything on that record and you know i was listening to metallica and pantera and weird al and stuff like that and 
nothing not to be uh, against those guys. I love Metallica and Pantera, but man, that record just sent me to a different spot because I was like, as a, as a 14 year old kid, you're like, the drummer's not doing anything. It really, you know, as far as like playing is what I'm thinking as a 14 year old kid, but it is moving this thing like, like nobody's business. So it just changed everything for me. Now is the drums the first instrument you picked up then? Correct. Yep. That's the only instrument I play. So what kind of drew you to that? Was it listening to those records and hearing like it kind of leading the sound or? I mean, I just started, I just started beating on pots and pans when I was 10 years old and and then my dad had a friend who had a drum set and he was like let me take you over to my friend's house and see what you can do and I sat on a drum set for the first time and just started playing and my dad bought the kit from that guy that day and we brought it home that's dope now take yeah me, take me through your high school years what was it like uh kind of growing up with Brandon like were you guys playing in any like local bands or doing any writing or anything? Well, Brandon actually didn't start uh, be, he didn't become a musician until he was 14 years old. Okay. And so, and he just started playing guitar. And, uh, and so during high school, I'm about three and a half years older than him. During high school, I was in the high school drum line and all that stuff. So total band nerd. And, um, and then I was in those little cover bands and then Brandon started playing guitar and then we started just kind of playing together and then it just blossomed from there. We found a guy who played bass and and then it just took off. Now, were you doing mostly covers with Brandon at that point too, or was he already starting to write some material? We we weren't doing any covers. We were we were doing we were writing all of our own music. It was all like just like punk rock, pop rock stuff, like Fallout Boy, Panic at the Disco style stuff. And that's just kind of where it all went. We did, I mean, in I can remember in that band, we played for, we did like six years with that band. And we probably played two or three covers. It was all original music. That's awesome. Now, yeah. how did the Warp Tour opportunities come about? Was it with that same band? Correct. Yeah. We, we were called Crimson Soul and, um, it, it just it all came about that we were we had a deal we had a distribution deal with sony and um and then we had some people from warp tour that really liked uh what we did and so they invited us on of course we weren't at the seven or eight o'clock time slot we were at the one o'clock slot you know but it was still just like such an education and it was really cool i really enjoyed it what do you remember learning kind of your first early years on the road like that? The first thing that you learn and that stays with you forever for me is how to treat people. And that's everything to me is, you know, no one, no one who come to, who came to our merchandise line at one of these summer festivals, they're not going to remember any of our songs. They're not going to remember anything like that, but they are going to remember the way that we treated them. And the way that we spoke to them. And so that, and so we learned that so early on. And I still, that carry, that, that is carried with me to this day. And so I think that's the most important thing is just how people feel in your presence. Do you make them feel good about them? And that's what we did. We made, we made every conversation about them and like what they do. And so it, it just made things just so much easier and better. And we saw so much success from it, but it was from a truly genuine place. For sure. Now, is it coming out of that band that you decide to maybe uh, think about moving to Nashville or? Correct. Yeah. We, we kind of always had that, that drive because we, we played a bunch of times in Nashville at from with that band and we just met so many great people and there's just this energy here that is just so palpable. And the, and the, the main thing is that the, not only are people just good players and good musicians, they're good people. Yeah. And that's just made the biggest difference for us. Now, uh, what did those first couple months look like for you in Nashville, kind of networking and kind of just meeting uh, your four group of people? Yeah, that was, that was fun. That was just, you know, uh, we, you know, anytime anyone moves to Nashville, they have, you know, five or $10,000 in their pocket and they're just like, oh, I don't need a job or I don't need anything. And I'm just going to meet people and hang out. It's going to be awesome. 
and that's fun and that's cool for about two or three months and then you start to not have any money anymore so the first thing that i did when i moved here was get a job because that was there's a uh there's a very uh famous uh session drummer who has played on thousands of things he's uh his name's lonnie wilson and i met him and that's the first thing that he told me is he said he said ryan i'm gonna tell you two things number one get a job and number two don't be a dick <laughs> so and i followed it it's been great now when you first came to town were you uh trying to pick up gigs on the road or were you more focusing on doing session work yeah, I was I was all about uh, the road because I had never the only time I did studio work was in with the band and I did a couple other things here and there from with other projects. Uh, but it was mostly the road because that's all I that's all I'd known since I was 18. Yeah. And so I I did some stuff with Brandon and then I joined another band uh, and we did a ton of stuff with those guys. And um, and then went back with Brandon and then everything. And we've just done a ton of stuff since then. And, um, you know, it, it's, and then of course, during COVID, that's when everything turned and everything shifted to session work, which is I built the studio behind me in my house. Wow. Yeah. Now you play with Brandon on the road and you also have a band with him, uh, Badlands Sun. Kind of uh, talk about the difference between the two. Like, what's the difference in sound? And like, say you guys write a song. Like, how do you guys decipher? Oh, this one's more Brandon, or this one's more for Badland Sun. It never really, it never really came out like that because with with Badland Sons, we have the third guy in the band. His name's Luke, and Luke was the guitar player for Brandon's band as well. And so, when during this whole thing of creating this band everything just kind of morphed so naturally because we've been playing together for years anyway. And so it just morphed into this kind of new, I guess, I don't know. I don't know what you can call it. Just like this, this new feel of just like, and it, it didn't, it didn't, there was no like, Oh, is this Brandon or is this Badland Sons? It was just, this is what we do. Right. And this just sounds good. And that's, that's kind of how we went. Now, I remember like years ago, pretty early on in Brandon's career, seeing Bobby Bones, bringing him out on the road as one of his openers, kind of take yeah. me through that process of like how uh, Brandon and Bobby kind of got connected, which kind of got him some of his first big tour dates on the road with him. Well, I, 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 I know Bobby. I've met him a few times. He's a great guy. And, um, and I think the way Bobby works is he – find someone organically he just he discovers them he he sees a post from somebody and then he's the one that goes after them and so I think that's kind of what happened is Bobby went after Brandon and then after getting to know him becoming friends with him everything just kind of moved to because Brandon is good at harmonies he's good at everything and so he just wanted Brandon to be kind of on the road with him and just and be a part of it which yeah. I, I mean I thought was amazing now he brought you in to play some shows for with as the Raging Idiots too with with him Correct. right, and yeah you, that's right yeah you guys got to yeah open I did you yeah, guys got to open was, Garth then right yeah that was uh yeah that was last year uh, May of 2022 that was the that was probably one of the best days of my life and not because I got to open for Garth in front of ninety thousand people it's because I got to share that experience with my brother right. And, and we, we were together the whole day and we just, we, we kind of talk about it sometimes and we just remember, and we, we made ourselves be like, Hey, we need to remember every detail about this day. Cause we're going to be talking about it for years. And it was, and we do, and it was spectacular. What do you remember going through your head right before going on stage and just a huge stadium and kind of sharing that moment with your brother? Yeah. Well, I mean, you're playing a stadium show. So like the backstage is underneath the stage. Uh -huh. And so we're literally underneath the stage. Uh, it's me and Brandon and also Bobby and Eddie and another guy named Walker. And we're all just sitting there. We're all standing there and we're just like sweating and just like, oh, my God, this is about to happen. And then they just tell us to go on and we do a 30 minute set and 
that was it. And we had the time of our lives. Now uh, take us through kind of what you guys got going on now with Badlands Sun, like any plans for new music, uh, any big shows coming up that you're excited about? Well, you know, uh, with Badlands Sons, that whole thing, you know, whenever COVID happened uh, in March of 2020, we were we had already like signed deals with like uh, management and booking and like distribution and everything. We already had all that in place. And then COVID happened. And we were just, you know, just like everybody was just kind of kind of waiting around and seeing what would happen. And then it just got worse. And, you know, a lot of people don't realize that, that a lot of these management companies and booking and everything in, in the, in Nashville and all over the world, they dropped about 60 to 70% of their roster during that time. And they only kept their top money makers. And since we were brand new with that company and didn't have a lot of shows and didn't have a lot of, clout under our belt we were the we were some of those people that were dropped and so everybody dropped us in august and september of 2020 and you know we we kind of took it hard and then everybody just kind of went a different direction to you know you just had to survive and so brandon went the route of he went in the sync world like he's done a ton of stuff for you know music I mean, for movies and TV, commercials, jingles, sports themes, all kinds of stuff. And uh, Luke, he started a, a professional sign company, which that it's just it's it's just so weird what happens. And so um, now that COVID is on the back end and like we're, we're starting to kind of talk about different things and, and more than likely brand like it's going to go to towards Brandon Ray than more than Badland sons. Mm -hmm. And so, but who knows, you never know, like a song could just get picked up and who knows, but we're, we're pretty much open for any of it. For sure. Now I like to close yeah. my interviews by asking what's a piece of advice you've learned along your journey that you give to the aspiring musicians out there. Yeah, that to me, that's uh that's, I think that's the most important thing is like, it, it's not about, you being a great musician per se, you, you really do need to be a great musician, but you, you really need to be a good hang and you need to be, you need to be somebody that people enjoy being around. And, um, you know, I have, I have really good friends who are some of the top session and touring drummers in this town with some of the biggest artists. And that's not a brag. It's just, the, what I'm trying to say is whenever I hang out with these guys, we rarely talk about drums or we rarely talk about music. Yeah. We talk about, cause we talk about our fears, our, our doubts, our love, our, we, I, you get to know their family, their pets, their dogs, their cats. Like you get to know them on such a personal level and music just kind of becomes yeah, that's what we do for a living, but it's not necessarily who we are. And so, and the same goes with my brother, Brandon, like we hardly ever talk about music because, you know, mainly because he has a two-year-old kid now. And so that kid just kind of takes over everything. But, you know, I, I think it's, I think that's the most important thing is cultivating relationships and making that the focus of whenever you are meeting somebody, don't just be like, Hey, let me get a business card or whatever. Like nobody uses business cards. That thing goes in the trash. The second you get it, like put someone's name in your phone, like put their phone number in. And if you say that, Hey, let's get coffee sometime, then do it. Like follow up on what you say you're going to do, whether regardless if it's music related or not, just follow up and and be and just be somebody that they can be like okay i know for a fact that whenever we said we can go have coffee this person was right on it so that's who we should call for the gig because i know they're reliable and they're a cool hang because we just had coffee and so it's stuff like that that's that's mainly what that's that's really the only advice i can really give is um is that you know i'm i'll be 40 in a couple months which is wild to me but it's like I've learned that that's the most important thing through this whole journey 
And, um, and then music is just, that's the other part of it. That's just what you do. It's not exactly who you are. So that's it. Yeah. Hey guys, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Make sure to subscribe and leave a comment and check out my music on all streaming platforms at Justin McCormick. See you guys next time.